Welcome. My name is Kyle Kaneki. I'm the general manager of Makers Mercantile. I see some faces that are familiar. I'm glad to see uh, a few familiar faces, which is wonderful. Um, hi. Um, Karen couldn't make it tonight. She has some other uh, stuff she had to take care of. So it's me and lots of ideas for uh, ways to wrap uh, gifts and a couple just like random sort of decorating um, ideas. Our goal uh, in Maker's Night, as you know, is to inspire people to be creative and to you know, be curious and have fun. And another is what I think is really uh, important is uh, creating traditions. So being able to learn some simple things or get some ideas and then go from there to uh, bringing other people from your family or your friends um, and having them uh, engage in this creating a bit of a tradition for whatever holiday celebrations you have. Of course, this isn't just Christmas. I mean, I have my big giant Christmas tree up and my menorah over here. And, you know, um, I like decorating and celebrating. It's a wonderful part of our time of the year. So um, there's lots of different things I wanted to talk about. And the very first one I want to go over is um, just a very, very basic how to wrap a gift, like a different way to wrap a gift. Um, I don't have here any store-bought um, gift wrap. I'm using just brown craft paper, but you could also use other things um, like old, like newspapers. The, the want ads are fantastic or uh, comics are really fun to wrap presents in um, because there are things that are already printed and they're sort of fun. You can also draw and do other things onto that paper, which uh, we'll talk about a few of those in a bit. But first things first, how do you wrap the things? So I have, um, I have here, does anyone want some hot chocolate for a gift? That's a running for gift, right? So um, when I was a kid, and it's still very true, um, never trust the box. That's rule number one in the holidays, at least at my house it was, because we used whatever box we could find to put the thing in. Um, if you are giving someone a book, Someone always, they always get a book. They always get a book. You can, instead of just uh, wrapping the book up and handing it to them and being like, here you go, you can put that book into a different uh, container. Like maybe it's a, a, bowl, a box of cereal, like dry cereal. And so there's a book in there, but also when they shake it, it's rattly, rattly and don't understand what this is. And they open it and they're like, really? You got me, you know, Cheerios? Um, but then they open it and see that it's actually this book. Um, it's also a really great way to give gift cards. So if uh, I might stuck, stick a gift card in here as well, a little note, a card of some kind. So when they open it, it doesn't feel like just a gift card. It's a, another thing. Um, one of my friends, Chuck, would do stuff like that. He would come visit um, from out of town and then just like go through the people's pantry and find stuff and then like wrap the presents with like it's like their random oatmeal that they had in their pantry, um, which hopefully they don't want to eat the day before. So anyway, here's the deal. So I'm going to go on to my second camera here. Um, there it is. And here's my Nestle. Um, and I just have a piece of craft paper. This is just, you know, normal craft paper. And sorry, I know it's still not the easiest to see, but it's... It's bigger than, obviously bigger than the box. And I want it, I want to have lots of space on either side. And if I wrap this around, there's plenty to um, overlap, right? That would be really important. But I'm not going to do that, reg the, that wrapping that where you normally put a piece of tape and then a seam on either side. Not how I'm going to do it. Instead, what I'd like to do is uh, a little bit of origami kind of folding. Now this is so easy. It's really, really easy. It takes just a tiny bit of um, practice, but by like the second one you ever do, you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna take this piece of paper and I am going to take it almost all the way to the bottom. I'm kind of doing this upside down right now, but I'm gonna take it almost all the way to the bottom here. And I'm just gonna stick a little tiny piece of tape right there to hold that in place, okay? So, and actually, I'm gonna I'm just gonna grab 
because I have to see it. I can't tell what I'm doing. And I'm gonna mark this so you can just get an idea of where that box is. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this side here and squish it in, see? So I'm squishing it in and just creasing it where it's at the edge of my box and I'll crease it this way and I'll do the same thing with this piece here, okay? So now those are folded. Here. Increasing it, and bringing that paper up to the edge here, increasing again, right? So it doesn't look like it's gonna get wrapped, but it will. Now what I'm gonna do is take this, uh, this first piece that I folded and I'm gonna fold it this direction. You see, it's gonna create a pocket. And then um, fold this one the opposite direction. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's cool, right? It's kind of neat. It's like it makes this little uh, pockety thing. And then I want to go back to this side because I, I just brought um, this fold over. And then maybe I'll stick a little piece of tape there because it's um, a lot of stuff to hold down. Tape is your friend, right? So there you go. And if I just bring this one, I'm not, I don't have to change the angle or anything. I can just fold it and it makes another little fold. And I can do the same thing on this side. Um, and now I'm here at this little edge and I probably could have used a little bit bigger piece of paper, but since I don't have a bigger piece of paper, I'm gonna use a piece of double-sided tape, just two-sided tape to um, secure, see where I'm putting it there, and maybe just a touch right here to secure those down. Okay, so the top is totally perfect and beautiful, and this side you can still see what's going on. So in this case, I will fold these in. And I know some people uh, will trim first, but I like to kind of fold first to just get an idea of where the stuff's gonna fold and crease. And then I will take not your fabric scissors. <laughs> I'll take some plain scissors, some kitchen scissors or craft scissors. And I'm just sort of keeping an eye on where uh, the edge of my box is and trying to cut a straight-ish line along there. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and then I'll go back to what I did before because all those folds are nice and clean. Bring that up and this piece here where the final, um, where the final closure will be, I'm gonna use another little piece of that double-sided tape because I don't really wanna see the tape on my package. I just want it to get sealed, so. There's that, so I just put it on that, where I folded that down and just holding it tight, give it a nice little press. And there's the under, that's the back, the underside of the package. And here is the top of it. So that's kind of fun. You can imagine if that was, if you had, you know, scribbled all over the paper, you could um, do different prints and things with it. You can write a note on the paper, you know, just write a note and even just people's uh, handwriting is pretty cool, even if we think we have terrible handwriting. And then from there, you can stick a little card of some kind. Um, I should have had a card, but I don't. We'll just pretend this is a card. Um, but you can stick a little note card in here and, you know, there we go. Look at that, and now it's done. It's 
that could be a that could be a gift, right? So that's one way to do it. Another random different option is this one. It's it's just a single fold, and you can put a larger um, card in here. Um, I will forget that that is um, hot cocoa probably, but that's okay. Where is my uh, card at? I had it over here. Here we go. So if I wanted to um, decorate this little card, I'm going to um, just use a few random things. These are all just um, little bits of ribbon and trim. So this is kind of what I'm, I'm not gonna use the fur. That would be probably too much, but just little tiny pieces of ribbon and trim. Here's one that has some little measurements and stuff on it. That's kind of fun. There's one with cats. We'll use the cat one. Um, and I'm going, this is just, you know, like if it was the gift card. So I'm gonna take my little glue gun and just start down at the base and start with something to be the, the trunk of the tree. And then I need to start wide and then get smaller, smaller, smaller until the top because that's how we want trees to be, the big old triangle shape, right? So we'll start with maybe this one. And I'm gonna give Rick Rack Scissors a shot and see what happens. Nope. Oh. It's sort of fraying, which is fun. So, but I don't love it. I think I just want it to be nice and straight. And, and um, so I'm going to start with a different one instead. So here we go. It's kind of like slow TV, I suppose, watching just random crafting. Ooh, that side's really fun too, huh? This is um, a woven ribbon. So. Just gonna blob some glue on there and flip it over without burning myself. It's really, really good practice to have a small bowl of water when um, on your works table if you are working with hot glue because if you burn your hand you can stick it in the water um, if you have an iced drink of some kind that also is really great um, but uh, yeah you want to make sure that you are um, able to uh, stop that burning really quick if you need to here's a little something that says merry christmas merry christmas um, in from germany merry christmas from germany so why don't we use that this is actually some vintage stuff, I believe. If I can get the whole saying in there, we'll do that. If you don't want to use the um, glue gun, you can always use two-sided tape as well, right? But I do like my glue gun. And um, if you did this on a little piece of cardstock, this could easily become a, or, uh, a holiday ornament, you know, to go on the tree or decorate a home somewhere. And it stores really flat, which is great. And I was gonna do all these really straight, but I think I wanna do them a bit wonky. So we'll go to the cats, we'll do the cats next. And I am just sort of eyeballing how uh, big I want this to be. We'll make sure the cats are face up. There's cats I used you. I need another little narrow one. Hi, Lily, are you gonna help? Lily's here as well. Here's one with like some leaves. That seems too wide. Part of what's fun about this is just digging and seeing what you can find. That's a little party-ish, right? I'm actually gonna use this. This will come in in a few minutes too. Um, this is just a piece of ripped fabric, which I'm gonna 
do something with in a few. And you don't have to panic when uh, when working with hot glue. It takes a second, you know, a number of seconds for it to dry. So you don't have to be, you know, super, super quick in applying the stuff. It allow yourself, you know, to get the pieces placed and done, uh, placed properly so you don't just break out and burn your hands. We don't want to burn our hands. So we're down to two. I kind of like that side. I'm going to put this one on upside down because I like that. Um, the way that it looks. And that's how it kind of looks like eyes, but that's okay. There's those. And maybe. So I have my little uh, button jar here. I already grabbed a couple that I thought might work, but now that I've got all these other things on here, I'm wondering if uh, just a big shiny silver one. I kind of just want like a white, oh, here's a white button. Yay, that's what I think I want. So maybe, maybe you. A little more neutral. There we go. And I was wondering if we did like a little thing like this with that button on top. Maybe. It's kind of cute. Why not? So I'm just going to blob some glue here, maybe. And put my little ribbon on here. And then add just a touch more. For the, uh, this little piece here. So there's my little card. And now I guess once, uh, once all that's done, where did my package go? Lily, did you take our packages? Um, this can slide into that book if, we, if I could find the book. Did you really, she's sitting on it. <laughs> there we go. She's like, it's for me, it's my gift. So you just tuck a little, a little card in there and then they can see that, oh, that's kind of fun. So another thing you can do with your little scrappy scraps. So, okay, put that back for Lily to sit on if she wants to. Um, another thing that you can do um, to create sort of a reusable item, we have a, a machine, the Addy Express King Size, which a lot of people are looking for right now. They are on their way and they've been out of stock for quite a while, but when they do show up, uh, you can, it's a, it's a knitting machine and it knits, you know, you can knit a hat in maybe 30 minutes or so. It's very quick. And it's a really beautiful stockinette fabric with a, like a worsted weight yarn. Um, you can knit with yarn, with yarn that is feltable and you knit a tube and cinch the bottom of it together. So all the stitches are live. You just sort of pull the, um, that live, uh, string and it, it uh, gets all those stitches together, throw that piece of fabric into the washing machine and felt it. And once it's felted, you uh, once it's dry as well, you could just cut a few little slits and make a, um, a piece of trim. You can make something like this. So this is a obviously wine bottle, uh, cozy or little gift bag, but it takes, this would take probably 20, 25 minutes to crank out and then just to wash it and a, a little bit of decoration. And you can either just braid um, uh, a cord or use some other ribbon or something as that. Like how cool is that? And it's super quick to make. So that is another one that I wanted you to see. And of course then the gift uh, bag can be 
reused, right? One that uh, one of my favorite things to do is to uh, create um, packages that have to be torn open. Like you have to tear open the package to see what's inside. Um, and one of those that uh, Karin actually did is this. How awesome is this? So this is actually, um, it's a piece of um, wallpaper, wall covering. And so it is stuffed with, you know, stuffing and whatever, but the gift would be inside here. And this is sewn on the sewing machine, super easy to do. It's best if you have a, uh, a nice sharp needle, of course, um, and you just move very slowly and you stitch around your, uh, your shape. And each time you turn a corner, you stop with the needle down and then pivot your project and then continue. And once you have your uh, shape sewn, you can trim the edges around um, around your star or your shape with, uh, with scissors so you have a little bit of a seam allowance. And then if you poked a little hole here and put some ribbon, that would be a then it's an ornament and it's the gift. You know, maybe the gift card is in here. Maybe it's a diamond ring. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what else it could be. Either a diamond ring or a gift card. Apparently those are the two things that can be in here. Maybe it's a note. Maybe it's a, a note telling someone uh, something that was amazing, that a memory that you're sharing for the past year. But the only way to open this is to like literally rip it open. You have to steam rip if you wanted to, but you'd have to tear it to open it. Um, heavy paper would work really well. You, of course, could use felt or something like that, but then it really would require some kind of um, scissors or cutting to open it. But keep that in mind as well. You can just, uh, you can make packages that are a free form shape and quickly sewn, super easy. Um, if you are not a person who sews, you could probably do something similar with hot glue, um, you would just want to probably, it would take a little bit longer because you glue along some of the edges, wait a bit for it to dry and set up and then a little more. And once you have a nice sort of pocket, then you could stuff it and then finish it off. And um, binder clips, like, you know, little, I called them purse clips when I was little, I still do. Uh, you can use those to sort of clip the, um, the sides to hold them closed as well while the glue is drying and setting. So that's the sewn one, which I think is just so, so cute. Now, let's, let's play with the glue gun again. Um, this is a bit of a decoration. So I hope, uh, hope you might be interested in some decorating. Go back to that second uh, camera. So I have these, just these little craft bags right here. And so I have, um, I think it takes seven of these. Um, you might need a few more or less. More is just going to make it bigger. But I'm going to I'm just going to do this um, one to give you an idea of what it's like. So this is the open end. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run a strand of hot glue all the way up, not uh, not crossing that bit, and then right along the base here of the bag. And then I'm going to take another bag and put it right on top. And not burn myself while I'm doing this. You can use a, like a tongue depressor or something to sort of push that down so you don't hurt yourself. Um, or if you have fingers of steel, um, it is less worrisome. So you do that and then you do another line of glue and another line of glue and take another bag and put it on. You get that part right. That's not that's not hard. You do seven of those. We're just going to pretend that there are seven here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is uh, doesn't matter really which side it is. I'm just going to chop one side and then chop on the other side. And then um, a couple little chops here, one, two, and maybe on the other side. And 
So I only did two, like this is the one that I did with two. So you can see how it starts to make sort of a shape. Here I go to uh, out of and into this camera. Here it is. So here's the one that I just cut, but um, this one has uh, seven bags stacked on top of each other. Okay, and you saw how easy that was. It's um, wasteful for the poor bags, but watch how cool this is. Ta da! Um, takes just a tiny bit of finagling to get it to um, lay right. But then you can uh, put just a little bit of hot glue here and glue these together and you have a paper star. So fun. So that is another, here, oh, here's my other star. So lots of stars in the world. Fun ideas. Doesn't give you a gift, a way to wrap the gift, but it's a fun activity to do. So another thing that we want to talk about is uh, the ways that we um, wrap the presents and we got to put ribbon on them, right, of some kind. So I'd like to show you how to make uh, this ribbon. So this is made out of bits of fabric. Here's a bigger piece of rope here. One of our customers brought this in. I think it's really gorgeous. And this is just uh, upcycled strips of fabric. So two-sided fabrics work really well. Um, batiks are fantastic, but it doesn't have to be a super um, doesn't have to be a super fancy kind of fabric. It can be um, just scraps. So I'm gonna grab one of these. So I this is actually part of what's called a jelly roll. So it's not ideal. You really want the strips to be about one inch wide. Um, but what you do is you just need to get a cut started and then you tear it. And hopefully it will tear straight. It's gonna tear on the grain. Um, so if you're working from a large piece of fabric, um, it'll be a little bit easier to get it going because these are not cut necessarily on grain. But once you have the strips like that, I have two here. Surprise, they're red and green. I'm going to go to the second camera and show you how to make this really awesome thing. I had no idea how easy this was. So I have two pieces here. They are not perfect. They don't need to be perfect. It's okay. Um, and I'm just going to take the two together and tie a simple um, overhand knot. Okay. So there you go. There's the overhand knot. And I have two uh, strands. And I'm just for the sake of um, uh, the demo, I'm just going to use smaller pieces. So let's just pretend they were both this big. Let's just say that's how long the, the piece of fabric was. So you probably want to make something that's longer than this little bit of uh, is going to make. And you don't want to join a new piece of fabric right next to where you joined another new piece of fabric, right? So at the very beginning, once you have your piece, you can just back one of them up and just cut that one. You can tie this on later, add, add it on at the very end if you wanted, but you want the two ends to be offset. So after you've done some wrapping and wrapping and it's time to add a new piece of fabric, you would do it here and then wrap, 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 and then join another one here, you see, so they're offset. So this is amazingly easy. You ready? So you hold, you have to hold on to the knot. And the only one you're really worried about is the top one. And you're always just going to twist away from yourself. Okay. So here you go. You're going to twist like a time or two and then bring it down and sort of hold on to it. So I'm holding on to it with my pinky. Now this one is up higher. So I'm going to twist away from myself a couple times and bring it down and you just switch the order, but you're keeping them in the same um, orientation you're, and you're always twisting away, wrapping away, away, away. And once you have a little bit done, you can sort of move down your piece. I've already started making rope, easy as that. Um, the more, twists you put, you know, the rope might be tighter or looser and you'll figure out what, what is awesome 
uh, for the material you're using as you go. But I just think this is so, so cool. And it's easy, it's mindless. You don't have to do much, um, but you can do this with, uh, I mean, as far as like paying attention, you don't have to do much. You still have to twist and hold on. I'm not sure that I could do it for like eight hours. Um, my hand might cramp, but uh, this is kind of how you do it and twist, twist, twist. And twist, twist, twist. So now let's just pretend the phone's gonna ring. You get the handy dandy purse clip again, you know, the binder clip, and you can uh, just park it, or if you need a break from holding onto it. But that's how easy it is to make that. Look how cute it is. And it was just from these silly scraps of fabric, right? So if you're trying to figure out how much you need to wrap around this um, package or any box, here's a different box. One way to do that is to just take a piece of ribbon or whatever, and you go around the box one way, right? So there's around one way. And now I'm twisting these and then around the box the second direction. And so that's how much I need to just get around the box. And then I need to tie a bow, like however much you decide how much you want to do for the bow, right? So then if I cut this, I know that this uh, length, whatever this length is, is how much I would need to make of this to tie around this size box. So I don't have to use a tape measure. I just need to know um, how big the box is. So that's a little tiny measuring thing. How are we doing on time? We got good time. To end this, you just need to tie another knot. Um, holding on to all those twists. This would be easier if I was at the end, wouldn't it? And get those through to the other side. And then I'm going to push the knot towards this little tail here and give it a little tight twist. And there it is. So there's my little, I don't know, <laughs> my little sample, I suppose. It's not going to be much of anything, that tiny little bit. But uh, but that's what that is. So that is the braided fabric. There's another way to braid um, uh, yarns and things. And I did it using um, Sueno because I had just a scrap of it and a couple pieces of the Vegas yarn held together. And so I'm going to show you, I'm trying to make it so you can see this. I'm not sure how close focusing is, but, um, and then I put a pom-pom on one side. I didn't do the second pom-pom yet, but I measured how long I needed and I'm ready to attach the second pom-pom. And the way that you um, do this, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a single crochet magic thing that I learned when I was a kid. I don't really know what it's called but I'm gonna show you. So you take the, the yarns and I'm just using these because they're a little bit bigger and you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna tie a little knot. And because none of you are in here, otherwise I would say, could you please hold this for me? And someone can sit there and hold it while you do this. But it's me and Lily and she is not interested in sitting here holding a piece of um, yarn while dad does this weird thing. So I'm making a slip knot. I'll do it down a little lower so you can see it. So I just wrapped the uh, yarn in a circle and I'm pulling it through and it makes a slip knot, right? We know how to do that because we either crochet or knit or do something. And from there, it's just a matter of it, it, the looking at larger or smaller, depending on how you're pulling the yarn that goes to the ball of yarn. So I just reach through the loop and pull it through, right? So it's like a chain. This is making a single chain. And that's kind of a stitch. It is a stitch. And I pull it back up. It's like the elevator is going back up. And then I grab the yarn through the loop and I'm holding onto this and I give it a pull, letting this one relax. So it's this back and forth sort of movement that makes 
this really fun braid. And if you just try to keep the stitches sort of uniform as far as the tension, how tight you're pulling this, it makes this really fun. Um, makes this really fun sort of thicker ribbon. This is a great way to make, you know, even if you just, you know, even if you left it as a knot on either side and you didn't put a tassel, it's a great way to, to add ribbon using the yarn from a gift maybe that you've made. You know, perhaps you knitted someone a hat or, you know, crocheted a shawl or whatever. Um, you could just do this kind of braiding. You could also just regular braid. Um, my yarn doesn't want to behave. So, you know, what happens to yarn that doesn't behave, it gets cut. Um, and when I was a kid, I used to do this over, like for hours. I was a weird child. But um, whoop. anyway, once you get to the very end, you can give it a snip and just pull the entire tail through that loop and then pull the loop tight on the end. And that makes the other end of the piece. So now I've, I've made just a tiny little bracelet essentially, but it's kind of braided and fun. And then you can use that for your package. So, um, but I need a package. I don't remember which one I measured for this one. I think it was this guy. Um, so, I think for the, the one that I'm going to show you next, I can probably show you most of the steps and not have to show you all of the steps because um, you're all pretty smart. Where did it go? My little piece of paper. I used it. I used it before, didn't I? Here it is. Okay. So this one is taking us back to uh, probably elementary school. So I just have a piece of, this is a piece of just plain printer's paper, but it just as easily could be um, a page out of an old book or uh, part of an old knitting pattern, you know, whatever you want this, this side to be. It just needs to be a paper that can be folded and you're okay with cutting it. So I folded it one way, fold it a second way, and then I'm going to just fold it up like that. Do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna make a snowflake. It's very exciting, snowflake. And or a paper airplane, I suppose. It kind of looks the same. And if you have a, uh, a bone folder, that works really well. Or if you have really strong nails, um, getting those creases really, really um, in there is really uh, useful for this kind of a thing. So now I have this, um, I have a cat with a cat toy running around, but I have this little folded thing and I just want to pay attention to where uh, this little piece is because that's the biggest part of my little snowflake. So I'm going to take my scissors and um, just kind of do that, get rid of those pieces because that is, that's how big my snowflake can be. Now I can cut on either side of this however I want in uh, whatever uh shapes i might be interested in i just can't cut all the way through because if you cut all the way through it's done right you can use a hole punch on this you could you know depending on how strong the hole punch is um but any of that kind of thing you can experiment with and if it doesn't work you don't like what you came up with you can always um try it again i'm going to cut the tip just a really sharp angle and maybe I'll cut, I'll try to cut like a half circle-y thing here. Maybe I'll try to make it a heart because it almost looked like a heart there. All right. So, and then all the little scraps go in the garbage bag. And when I open this randomly cut thing, it becomes a snowflake, yay. So there's my snowflake. 
And what I'm going to do next, I actually am going to go ahead and spray it, uh, use the spray adhesive and uh, put it on this paper for you. Normally, sorry, that might be really loud. Normally I would spray, I would put it like either take it outside or put it in a big cardboard box sort of outside because I'm going to use um, like a spray adhesive, this stuff, something like this works really well, but um, it also is not great for you to breathe. So I'm just giving it a good, good shake and I'm going to just give it a spray. That's all it needs. And then uh, this over here. And we're just going to pretend that this piece of paper is this is the wrapping paper I'm going to use for the present that we're making, right? I'm just going to take my little snowflake and I'm starting just right at the center here to try to squish it flat. And then I'll work my way out um, nice and slow. And if you're sensitive to chemicals or anything, you might want to wear gloves if you like um because you don't want to you know if the glue gets on your skin it might be a issue but that's essentially how easy that is and what happens once it's dry you can fold uh it up and wrap a gift and it looks something like that which is kind of fun i'll go to the so it looks something like that and I offset it as I was wrapping this little package so that um, the snowflake wasn't right in the middle. And I don't know where the pom-pom went. Here it is. I think the pom-pom one fits this guy. No, it doesn't. I wonder which one it was. Oh, well, we're not worried. But I love this. I think this is so fun. Um, if you wanted to add more to it, you could certainly, you know, draw or stamp or whatever onto the paper. And then, uh, and then um, use it as the gift wrap. One more thing I'm gonna show you just on the same piece of paper is uh, cookie cutters. So you can find cookie cutters, super cheap, right? Um, this is great for little kids. The metal ones are probably a little less awesome for kids that are just a little bit sharp, but there's lots of plastic ones. So if you can, if you find those and pick them up at a, um, you know, yard, junk, uh, yard sale or thrift store, that kind of thing, you can take these and you can use markers or you can use crayons or whatever, but you don't want to use these for baking after you've done this really just in case. Um, but what you want to do is hold it nice and tight down and then just start scribbling and everyone can scribble so maybe you know big brother holds the thing and you know little brother or little sister can do the scribbly scribbling and be surprised what kind of fun stuff happens with a marker so i've got that green now i'm going to go to a darker one because this one's pretty light there we go so I've got a bigger one now just because I want you to be able to see as well. Scribbling. scribbling. And you could be more exact and try to do patterns and things if you wanted. Um, the most important thing is just to get all, all the way around the mitten. There's a mitten. You can, you know, you could do something else if you wanted as well. You could flip it over, I suppose. I'm just trying to show you what happens if you aren't quite as careful with the um, holding it down. It just gets a little, just a little, the edges are just a little bit softer, but it still looks great. How fun is that? And um, easy, easy. So little kids can do that. And it could be stars, it could be a little tree, who knows, whatever you want it to be. So that is that one. What else did I want to show you? I wanted to show you a quick mention about maps. So this is just an old. If you have time before we go, someone did ask if you could show how to add fabric when you're doing your fabric rope. Uh, yes. So you, you basically just tie a little knot. But yeah, I can show you. So this is essentially just an old map, which you can very easily wrap a gift in. 
I don't have to show you more than that. You understand how to do that part. Um, and yeah, we can do that. We have time to show that. I also want to, I really do want to show you how to tie a bow. So um, we're already in this, uh, this layout. So why don't I, as we're going, I still have this one. So I think I can show you from here, right? But my knots will be in the, my uh, knots will be in the same place, won't they? That's okay. I hope this is useful. I hope it's interesting for everyone. I know that you know um, I'm throwing just a lot of random ideas out at you. Uh, the goal is just to get those. As I said, how can you use things that are you know, can be reused. One of my favorite things, like this little box here, this little metal box um, that's hiding part of my camera, it has in it um, holiday cards from people. So I keep all the holiday cards and, you know, people pass on and leave, uh, leave our lives. Um, it's a really nice way to go back, you know, sort of dig through all those layers of cards and I can remember and see, you know, my aunt or my, you know, one of my friends from college or whoever it is. So that's what's in that one. And it goes away with the holiday decorations, gets packed away, and then the next year it comes out. But it could just as easily uh, be storing some of my um, glass ornaments. And then it could be used to wrap a gift. And then it goes back to glass ornaments. So just as we're just tying uh, an, a double knot which is probably hard to see. I'll do it bigger. And I would just leave those little um, ends. Here's another one. They're very close to each other, but that's okay. And I probably would have used my little handy dandy uh, binder clip at that point. But I can take my fabric and do the same thing, twist and twist it and bring it down, twist it a few times and, and just switch the order. And as you keep going, um, it will eventually work past the, um, the knotted section. And if these two, if this starts getting twisted also, which it will, you can just carefully detangle it, but you don't want these pieces to be like eight yards long. You really do need to knot them. So I'm just twisting again over and so on. Does that make sense? Super fun. Eh, come on. So, and even if those end up being there, I mean, I think they're kind of cute, but you could always just trim them shorter um, if you wanted to. But I just added, you know, that much more to it. Just keep on going. Um, I wanted to show you how to tie a bow quickly. So tying a bow is very easy. It requires just a few things. Um, it ne you need a piece of wire. So a twist tie will work, but I didn't have a twist tie. And now I don't know where my wire cutters went, but that's okay. We'll use my craft scissors. So I have a piece of wire and I have some ribbon. So the way I tie bows is uh, what's called a production bow. So they're sort of a three-dimensional bow. There's a, one of the tails that comes out of the center of the bow and the other tail is out of the back. Looks like um, this. Very, 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 very easy. The trick is just like almost everything else is holding on to the, uh, holding on to the ribbon and not letting it go. So here we go. I am going to start with a tail and the tail can always be trimmed and I'm going to twist and I'm always twisting away from myself and I hold on to that twist. Then I need to make 
the center loop for my bow. So there's the center loop. The, the ribbon just goes all the way up around. And every time I pass this point, I twist away from myself. So then I make the first loop and you build your bow from this inside loops out as it goes. And I'm twisting. And I wanna to try to match the size of each loop on either side of the, um, either side of the bow. And it takes a little bit of practice to get used to it, but I will tell you, um, it doesn't take that long and you can become really successful at making a bow. And then you can use it to decorate your gifts. And in a pinch, you can tie bows for a wedding <laughs> when someone's like, I don't have a bow for my wedding and we really need it. And you can say, I know how to do that. And you can help them out. So more loops are better, of course. So And ribbon that has wire in it, like the wire edged ribbon is a little bit easier to fool with. So if you wanna give this a shot your first time, buying ribbon that has wire in it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so this is looking pretty good. And gonna, one more. And one more, I'm just gonna, Chop ribbon and another twist. And it's sort of just leaning out this way. So I've not moved my thumb. This loop is still in the middle and every twist is under the center point, right? So I take my piece of wire and it needs to go, it's gonna replace that pressure that I'm using between my thumb and my first finger. So keeping all of these guys in the same spot, I'm gonna give it a big pull and a twist. And it's, it's fine now, it's secure. But what I do is I like to make a little bit of a, a little circle-y thing here. And I'll bend these wires in, it's probably not easy to see on the camera, but I, I still keep those there. Then I can start moving these loops around. So here we go, moving loops around to try to create more of a round shape. Okay, there's my little bow. And might as well put them on a package. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is my package. And I'm just gonna blob some glue right onto that. Uh, onto that package and set it in place. Now, now you might start to see why the, um, those bits of wire were useful because since they're there, they're gonna hold that glue in place. So I'm letting that just sort of set up a bit. And then berries from my yard, because why not? And I'm just gonna cut a few of these seems a little long. So this kind of thing you probably don't want to do if you have pets who like to nibble on stuff because you don't know necessarily which uh, plants are poisonous or not and all that kind of thing. So be aware of that. Um, and it's works really, really well if you are giving a gift um, that night. So like, you know, if I was going over to someone's house and I had a gift that I wanted to give them, I can take my um, package and just take a few pieces of greenery, whatever is available. These berries are great. They're very, you know, festive looking um, pieces of, if you have um, evergreen of any kind, you just want to make sure that the, the material itself is dry. You know, if it's pouring rain out or it's wet outside, you might want to cut those pieces and, um, and let it, um, dry inside first. So I'm gonna take one more little piece and where's it gonna go? You're gonna go actually into the bow. I'm just gonna stuff it right inside here. And 
I think that's pretty fun. So that's the bow. And then as far as like what kind of uh, card you might use, I made um, like I took just a hanging tag, you know, these craft tags and drew a circle and made a, a wreath out of buttons. Or I'm a fan of old photos, like old, like random photos, not people I know, but you can find them and buy them in bulk actually. You can punch a hole through this and you know write the to and from on it, um, but you could use that as the um, as the name tag, the gift tag. How much time do we have? We're out of time. Um, so yeah, those are the two I guess that I will show you. Any questions at all? Or um, there's of course lots of uh, other ways that you can wrap gifts. If you search on Pinterest or whatever, you'll find lots of things. The important thing, I think, is to uh, get people involved. You know, it does make a bit of a mess, but um, printing wrapping paper, if you buy just the roll of uh, craft paper, you can draw and do that, make that a fun family event, and then people can take it away and wrap presents. Um, once the piece is wrapped in craft paper, somehow the decorating of the packages is pretty easy as well to do without knowing what's in it. Um, you can just write, you know, in pencil or whatever, you can write the to and from, and that can be hidden under the bows and stuff. And again, like I mentioned before, if it's live greenery stuff, make sure that it's in a place where it is safe, where little kids or little uh, fur babies don't. Uh, nibble on it because that is important. I think that's it for this maker's night. I know <laughs> it's it for our December. We made it through a whole year. So um, next next year in January, we're going to have another, of course, another fun event. Um, I have not released what it's going to be, but of course it will be awesome. And uh, especially because you're going to be there with us. So that is the thing that keeps us um, energized about, you know, coming together and trying to present different ways of doing things and thinking about them and um, love seeing what you do. So if you do um, come up with ideas or incorporate any of these into your holiday traditions, I'd love to see pictures, love to share those with um, our friends as well. So with that, I think I'm going to say thank you and have a good night. And I'm going to probably wrap a few more things since I have all this stuff out. And then I'm going to clean up my house. So have a, have a fun night, everyone. Thank you again. And we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs>